thing that I have learned as a professional pet groomer is that pet parents want to take the best possible care of their dogs. The first thing that they do when they plan to bring home a new puppy is go to the pet store and bring home a little tiny brush for a little tiny dog. Many times as the puppy grows, they do not upgrade the brush for their individual dog's coat type. Understanding the coat types is the first step. You cannot properly brush your dog without the correct tool for your dog's coat type. Why does this matter? Because the brushing will be ineffective if you use the wrong tools. This Coton de Tulier clearly demonstrates the importance of having a proper brush and comb on hand. For a coat like this, I use a firm pin brush, the Artero Long Pin Slicker, and a wide tooth comb. I am demonstrating with the Artero Long Pin Slicker and the Chris Christensen Big G, the coral brush as some groomers call it. I am also demonstrating the wide tooth comb and the medium fine tooth comb. In a coat like this, as well as many primitive coat types, it's actually cruel and ineffective to use the wrong tools. As you can see, the brushes look very similar. Unless you look closely, you can hardly see a difference. But the Artero brush glides through the coat while the Big G brush won't move. The same with the combs. The wide tooth comb shows that there are no mats, while the finer tooth comb actually teases the hair into mats, which then must be worked out with the Artero brush and the wide tooth comb, and then the wide tooth comb will again pass through the coat. Now, many pet owners tend to only brush and comb the outer layers, but this is wrong and it will leave mats. The correct way to brush long or thick coats is to line brush. Create a line and then brush from the skin out. Then pick the coat from the skin out with the wide tooth comb. It is important to comb the entire dog from the skin out to ensure that there are no mats or tangles. Brushing a thick cottony coat that has been trimmed down to three inches or shorter I use the long pin slicker, the universal slicker, and the wide tooth comb. These are quite effective. Be sure to brush and comb from the skin out, especially on bath day. So let's talk about the tools in my toolbox. The soft slicker brush is perfect for hair under three inches long as a maintenance brush, but does not remove mats. The long pin slicker has pins that are not too stiff allowing the brush to penetrate the thick long hair without too much drag and pull. The Universal Slicker has stiff, shorter teeth. This brush is perfect for brushing out mats from all dogs and removing shedding coat from shorter hair and wiry hair. The Pin Brush is ideal for long hair. This brush does not have drag and pull in the coat and is highly recommended for long furnishings long sulky hair, and long show coats. It is ineffective on shorter hair, under three inches long. The pin brush is also excellent for long arctic and primitive coat types. The Mason Pearson brush is perfect for thin, fine, or sparse hair. The Chris Christensen Big G is great for removing shedding hair from longer coats and dematting longer coats. However, it is very stiff and it has a lot of drag and pull in the coat. So I do recommend pre-brushing the hair with a softer slicker before you go into the coat with the Big G brush. The rat tail comb aids in tying up top knots. The pumice stone helps to remove hard, wiry top coat that is in the exogen phase and removes soft downy undercoat in areas where the coat is already short. The carding knife removes soft downy undercoat that keeps the coat looking dull and prevents the coat from lying flat. Or bristle brush is best used on short coats to distribute oils and bring out shine. The medium fine comb is used to check for knots in medium and fine texture coats. The wide tooth poodle comb is used in thick, curly, or cottony coats. The coated tips on this slicker brush are helpful on sensitive skin. 
but should be used on hair less than three quarters of an inch long. The Artero pin brush has firm pins, which are great for cottony or primitive coats. The Madden medium pin brush is perfect for show coats on poodles and drop coats. For dogs with fur, I separate the tools by the type of fur that they have. Arctic primitive coats, such as the Pomeranian, I use the pin brush, the long pin slicker, and the wide tooth comb. I recommend line brushing these dogs once a week. For Pomeranians such as this Korean import with a silkier coat, I use the long pin slicker and skip the pin brush altogether. I then comb out with the wide tooth comb. For the typical Pomeranian coat, I line brush with a pin brush, then go back over the dog with the long pin slicker. Then I pick out the coat with a wide tooth comb. It is very important to never allow this coat to become packed in as this is unhealthy for the skin and can cause the dog to overheat. If the coat should become packed in, gently remove the undercoat with a pin brush. Do not shave it off as this can cause permanent coat damage. Never wash this coat without thoroughly brushing and combing the same day. Otherwise, the packed in undercoat will felt, causing a very difficult situation for the restoration of the coat. Wiry coats need stiff brushes to pull out the loose coat. For this hand strip terrier, I am using the coated pin slicker. Double brush, double comb. Once a week, brush the wire coat with the brush. This stimulates the skin and pulls out some of the dead hair and excess undercoat. Next, comb through the coat with a medium tooth comb to remove tangles. Then take a fine tooth comb and comb to really get down to the skin. Make sure all the tangles are out of the coat and the coat is smooth. This will remove a lot of dead hair. Finally, go over the whole coat with a slicker brush. Even if you don't want to strip your dog at all, this brushing and combing technique will make a big difference. Done in conjunction with stripping, the results will be spectacular. I also then go over the coat with a carding knife and follow that with a stripping stone. What is carding? Carding should not be confused with hand stripping. While the tools are similar, the techniques are quite different. The purpose of carding the coat is to remove loose undercoat while leaving the top coat in place. This technique is demonstrated several times in this video. Once with a hand strip Parson Russell Terrier, now with an Airedale who was clippered with a four blade, and later with a Cavalier with a flat coat. Why is this included in a brushing video, you may ask? Because coat maintenance is more than regular brushing and combing. Pet parents need the information and tools to care for their dogs between professional grooming appointments. Even if you choose to clipper your dog's coat, carding and the use of the pumice stone on dogs with wire coats and flat coats will keep the coat and skin in optimal health and condition. Another helpful tool for these coat types is the coat rake seen here or the coat king tools. These two bring out an abundance of coat on a flat or wire coat. I find that they work well on certain coats like the Karen Terrier, the Giant Schnauzer, Woolly Coated Terriers, Cavaliers, and the like. They must be used strictly with the lay of the coat, meaning in the direction which the coat naturally grows or they will cut the coat. If the coat is cut, it will have a negative effect on color and texture. As the tool becomes dull, it actually works better. When the tool is used correctly, the undercoat is pulled rather than cut. If it is pulling correctly, there will be hair on both sides of the blade. If it is cut, the hair will only be on one side. It is easy to tell the difference. The coat should look natural with no cut lines in it whatsoever. After carding, I prefer to run the stripping stone over the coat to remove any loose top coat. It is extremely important to properly maintain your dog between professional grooming days. Whether the dog is hand stripped or the dog gets a haircut, failure to give your dog proper coat maintenance is neglect. If you say that you brush and comb daily and the dog is still matted, you are not doing it correctly. 
you are not using the right tools, or you are not finishing the job at hand. It is very important to have a place ready to work on your pet with all of the tools together. So be prepared. As you develop a routine, you will find it easier. Have a toolbox or a tool kit, and always put your dog on a table or a surface to work on them. Make it pleasurable for both you and the pet. Mixed coat types are usually created from breeding dogs with hair to dogs with fur. While this coat combination is usually represented in mixed breed dogs, there are a few purebreds with this coat type as well. Here I show a Pomeranian Yorkie type mix, a Spaniel Havanese type mix, and a Chihuahua Yorkie type mix. Each coat is handled differently. One thing in common is the universal slicker brush. This brush will grab and remove an abundance of the undercoat. This is important because these dogs produce undercoat, but it usually does not shed out and release like the typical double coat. I always use the fine medium comb to help pull out the loose coat. Because this undercoat does not shed out on its own, these dogs are highly susceptible to matting. Do not bathe this coat type without thoroughly brushing and combing the entire dog from the skin out on the same day as the bath. That is a general rule for all dogs as a matter of fact. On the Spaniel mix, I am using the Andis undercoat rake to remove the loose coat before brushing and combing. This will greatly improve his skin health as leaving this coat intact will clog the follicles resulting in skin problems. This excess hair will not come out with just a brush and a comb. Proper care is essential to a healthy skin and coat. This mix just needs a good brushing and combing with the universal slicker, the coated pin slicker, and the medium fine comb. Three mixed coat types, each completely different. Sometimes you have to try different tools to find out what works best. I usually cannot tell until I touch the dog. The first dog was soft, but you could see a little undercoat. The second dog had an extremely soft coat with a second layer of undercoat that was clearly visible. The third dog was thick and wiry with an undercoat. None of these coats were candidates for hand stripping, and none of these coats would be altered due to clipping because of their genetics being a mixture of hair and fur. If you need help, ask your professional groomer which tools are best for your dog. Dogs with hair have a much longer growth cycle, so they do not shed like dogs with fur. For very long drop coats, such as this Yorkie, I only use a pin brush on the majority of the body. The pin brush has no drag and pull on the coat and will not break hair. I never use pin brushes with ball tips or plastic tips on the pins as these seem to only pull and break the hair. My favorite pin brush for silky coats is the Madden Medium Firmness Pin Brush, along with a medium fine tooth comb. For thicker long drop coats, such as the Shih Tzu or Havanese, I prefer the Artero Pin Brush with a wide tooth comb. I also use a soft slicker brush for the feet and under the arms, and a rat tail comb for tying up top knots. Silky coated dogs with their hair trimmed short like this Yorkie need gentle slicker brushes. For the shortest hair, under three quarters of an inch long, I use the slicker with the plastic coated tips. For super thin hair, I use the Mason Pearson brush, especially on the skull. For hair one to three inches long, I use the soft slicker and for the face, I prefer the Denman comb. Curly bushy coats benefit from the use of slicker brushes. The length of the coat dictates my choice. For hair less than three quarters of an inch long, I will use the coated tip pin slicker. For hair under an inch long, I use the soft slicker and the universal slicker. For hair one to three inches long, I use the long pin slicker and the universal slicker. For longer show coats, I use an Artero pin brush and a long pin slicker on the longer areas.
for the lower legs, I use a universal slicker. I always use a wide tooth poodle comb on these coats. Should the coat become matted, it is necessary to use stiffer brushes like the Universal Slicker and the Chris Christensen Big G. The reason for this is that the maintenance of the coat is a constant routine. The level of difficulty depends on the length of the coat and other factors such as do you wash the dog? Does the dog swim or go into a wading pool? Do you have a harness on the dog? Does the dog wear clothing? If the dog is in full coat or has a lot of hair around the neck, does he wear a collar? If you wash your dog, do you that very same day thoroughly brush and comb that dog over every inch of its body? All of these factors determine the amount of work necessary to maintain the coat. I specialize in maintaining a full coat. My own dogs and many of my clients' dogs have coats in amazing condition. It is a labor of love. The secret is dedication. It's not a chore. It's actually a bonding time for you and your pets if, and only if, you both enjoy it. Sometimes it can become frustrating if the dog fights the brush, or if you give the dog a quick bath with no brushing, only to realize later that it was a disastrous decision. Or do you leave a cute Christmas sweater on your dog for three days while we have freezing temperatures? only to end up with a completely shaved down dog. Sometimes the clients think, no worries. The groomer has special techniques, special tools, and wonderful conditioning treatments that they are trained to use in the event that your dog has a few little mats. And to an extent, this is true. The problem is, when we brush out matted hair, it hurts. And when the dog already hates the brush, it can be traumatizing. Sometimes I can do it once to save a dog's coat, but the next time the dog says no. I often have clients who prefer for me to save the coat, to please keep the hair that I trimmed short underneath last time and let it grow out. But if the coat is matting at this shorter length, why should we grow it longer? The dog's owners must listen to the pet. If the pet cannot tolerate the brush, then keep the hair shorter until the training and routine are established. The routine and tools depend on the desired length of the coat. Learn more about caring for the different coat types from Jennifer Bishop Jenkins. You can buy the 15 coat types chart on groomersguide.com. You can find tools links at groomingsafer.com. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a single upload. Bye guys.